Hello, and welcome to the official podcast of the Cleveland International Film Festival, Civ Speaks, sponsored by Wayside Furniture. I'm Dee Perry, and I'm joined by my producer and co-host, Aaron Spears. Hello, Aaron. Hey, Dee. So, Aaron, the film we'll be talking about today was produced by Zemo Mountain Farm, an organization based in Vermont. Now, they've created a space where people with disabilities can be immersed in arts and culture, including making movies. Right. They have produced uh, several short films, one of which, Bulletproof, became the subject of a actually multi-award-winning documentary, Becoming Bulletproof, that played at the 2015 Cleveland International Film Festival, the 39th year. They won the Film Slam Student Choice Award, the Global Health Competition, and the Roxanne T. Mueller Audience Choice Award. Oh, very cool. And and today... We're going to turn the spotlight on Zeno's first feature-length film, a musical titled Best Summer Ever, which will be the closing night film for SIF 45 streams. And joining us now is one of that film's stars, Shannon DeVito. Welcome, Shannon. Thank you so much for having me. I, I want to um, start by by talking about the role you play in the film Sage. How would you describe that character? Oh, um, well, she is a kind of spunky teenager who is just trying to live her best life. I think Uh, she sees the world a little differently, differently than most people. Um, She kind of sees it from a more realistic point of view than, than most, but she's definitely got a little edge to her, but she's uh, kind hearted at at the end of the day. Shannon, for me, um, as I was watching it, my notes were fiddled just like Shannon stole another scene up. She stole another scene. (laughs) You're, but it was like, it was the singing and it was like the, I think in musicals too, there's an underrated element of comic timing. And since this is a musical comedy, I had several laugh out loud moments, uh, thanks to your performance. And then I read that you have a background in improv comedy. Was that helpful in this part? I mean, I think I try to bring, regardless of what genre it is, I think it's always good to have a little bit of levity. So I try to always bring my comedic side to anything I do. Um, I mean, I guess, especially if I'm doing a comedy, that's probably helpful. Um, But uh, um, yeah, I mean, I think for this, it was great because they often let me just kind of improv a little bit, or um, if I had like a line suggestion um, or like a different joke suggestion, they would let me do it. So I was really grateful to um, have that opportunity to kind of bring my comedic voice to it a little bit. Well, the story seemed very tight as well, narratively speaking. So like, was there, there was some room for improv on the set as you were doing scenes? Um, Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say improv as much because uh, I was the only one. And uh, (laughs) I think if I did that, um, everyone would freak out. Um, But uh, it was more like, hey, I want to try this line differently. This is what I'm thinking. Can I do it? And then they would be like, sure. Um, Or not sure (laughs) if it was bad. Um, (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah, I think that it was more that than me just like riffing with a bunch of different improvisers because that would have gone off the rails very quickly. (laughs) What if your coworkers aren't ready for that? That That's going to throw off your game too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very different when you're with like a group of comedians versus a group of actors um, who are not uh, used to improv. I I think they're, then they're just like used to what's on the page. If you Mm. stray from what that is, they're like, what's happening. (laughs) (laughs) Well, speaking of your coworkers and your, 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 uh, the other rest of the cast, what was the casting process? I guess from, from your point of view, how did you get connected and involved with this project? Sure. So, uh, the casting director, um, Tara reached out to me and asked me to make a tape. They were, um, they were looking for someone, Normally what Zeno does is they cast all internally and they use their campers and their um, their teams that they have around there. Um, but because they were doing such a, a, a big feature, they wanted someone with onset experience who was able to do an entire film. Um, and so they asked me to, to submit my materials and um, I guess they didn't think I sucked, so that was good. And then they... <laughs> had me come um so it's really not the most glamorous story in the world uh but uh yeah so yeah it was just a process of sending a tape in and and you mentioned um Zeno Zeno Mountain Farm before you signed on for the film did you know anything about uh, about that place about what they did I probably should lie to you and say yes I did my research <laughs> but no I did not <laughs> 
<laughs> so, so then when you did arrive at, at Zeno, what were your impressions of, of their programs and the people and working with them? Sure. You know, it was definitely uh, a learning experience. I think they, they are a very tight knit community and they have so much heart and kindness and um, they really do believe in what they're doing. And I think that that's such a refreshing thing to be around. They really become a family. And um, it was interesting being an outsider coming into that family because they were so welcoming and lovely but it definitely uh, it, it it was it was really cool to see kind of what their process was and and how they they kind of lived their whole lives with that like inclusive attitude, which was a really really refreshing thing to be around. Yeah, and and you've said that as a wheelchair user yourself, you're attracted to acting roles that don't have disability as the primary focus. So. How would you describe the focus of Best Summer Ever? The, I mean, that was definitely something that they wanted to make sure was the case, is that disability was not necessarily a factor in this character. She was just a person in the world, you know, and living her life. And that's really their whole philosophy, is that anybody can do anything. So that was a really cool, cool thing to be part of. Yeah, I, I I I do love roles like that. I mean, it, that's not to say that I think it should always be ignored. I, I think that there's a way to have a character who is disabled and doesn't ignore the fact that they're disabled because, it, you know, it is part of you, but it's not your entire being. So I, I do, I think, I like characters who are multidimensional. And I don't, I don't think that we ignored her disability in Best Summer Ever, but I def- it was not the focus in any way, shape, or form. So this being a musical adds like a whole other production element to it. And I'd read that this particular project took uh, about two years or so to put together. Uh, how much- <laughs> We're still filming it, actually. Oh, it's still in process? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how much of that time was spent on just the filming part uh, of it? Most of it, Most of I it. think uh, the songs were easy. <laughs> <laughs> Mumu came down the weekend before we started filming and we knocked the songs out in a weekend. And then I really didn't touch them again until like we had like little line changes we needed to do and things like that. And then she added a song. So I had to like go in a closet somewhere and do that. But for the most part, um, I, yeah, I didn't, I, they were like, they were the easiest part. <laughs> Doesn't like that's usually the story with musicals, uh, which is good to hear though. How how did that go filming wise, like on set then? So were you guys just lip syncing when you were doing the actual acting portion uh, to the music or did you just sing on set, but just didn't use that audio? Yeah, uh, both, I think. I mean, I think for me anyway, I feel like if you just lip sync that it looks like you're lip syncing. So um, I, I tried to sing along as much as possible for um, for Leave Behind. We did it so many times and I'm not exactly sure. I don't really remember um, what ended up in the film. Um, but because we did it 17 different ways. But one of the ways that we filmed it, it was slowed down. So that was very hard to like sing to because I, um, it you had to do it I remember it was slow down or fast. It, I, it doesn't really matter, but it was one of the directions. And so that I couldn't sing to that part. But um, for the most part, I tried to sing along just so it didn't look like I was. Um, who, who, was who was the Simpson that did that on SNL? Not Jessica, but her sister. Oh, Ashley Simpson. Yeah, I, was, I wasn't Ashley Simpsoning it. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> That's a reference that no one has heard in a very long time. I really should update my references. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, well, actually, you provide a really good transition though with references because there's, I, I being a big musical fan, I was I was uh, struck by the number of different musical references in the movie. So there's certainly like the Grease reference um, that even directly, I think, to the camera. There's like a great line about that, and there's going to be like some High School Musical comparisons. I feel like I detected a little Footloose in there possibly like when anthony's running around he like, goes to the bar at one point he's just like i gotta dance had like a footloose vibe to me as well were there any other um kind of musical inspirations you guys talked about on set or kind of were discussed while you were filming or that you snuck into the film um 
not really. I mean, I tried to channel Let It Go uh, while I was singing my song, I guess. So in my own brain, I was Elsa. Um, <laughs> that counts. That counts. But um, <laughs> no, I, I mean, I think that they wrote the script w- with the idea that it was supposed to be campy and really an, uh, an homage to all those like teen musical comedies that exist in the world. And I, um, but no, we didn't, we didn't really ever talk about it. I don't think. Well, did you have a, a relationship with musicals before this? I mean, are you a musical theater or, or a film fan? Oh yeah. I, I've been a musical theater nerd since I was a very small child. Um, I, I always wanted to be in musicals. I grew up a musical theater person. Um, I trained in it. I, I, I really wanted to be a singer for a very, very long time, but I, uh, <laughs> I am a terrible dancer. Um, so <laughs> musicals on stage are not really my forte. Um, I'm going to leave that to people who are very good at it. Uh, so I was very lucky to be able to kind of infuse some of that stuff that I did as a child, uh, into my stuff now. And I apologize that my dogs also want to be part of this interview. That's all right. <laughs> I wasn't sure whose it was. <laughs> uh, I've got two of them and they are deer outside and they mm. do not like that. They are protecting <laughs> us from the deer. Well, I wanted to touch on the fact that um, Best Summer Ever is the most fully integrated film I've seen in terms of bringing people with disabilities and without together. What about behind the scenes on the film crew? Yeah, that is real. That is Zeno's whole thing is that they want an integrated cast and crew of people with and without disabilities. And that's very, very important to them. Um, and it should be very important to the entire industry, but we're, we're getting there. Um, so yes, there were, um, it was an integrated crew as well as, as on screen. Shannon, the whole film to me had, I mean, there's just... Uh, which is some of the best musicals do that they have just nonstop energy. And then this one has a real strong kind of let's put on a show vibe <laughs> about it, which I think comes out of that whole summer camp setting that you've got there. Did you, did you ever have a chance to attend a theater camp? I mean, you mentioned being, um, you know, musical theater geek for most of your life. Did you ever have a chance to go to a camp like portrayed in the film? Um, no, I went to uh, one sleepaway camp and I hated it so much. And my parents had to bribe me to go, but it wasn't theater camp. So I think if it was theater camp, I would have been like, yeah, let's do it. Um, but it was not. And, uh, but I did, I mean, I did a lot of like community theater and stuff. That was like my summer camp is like, we had this, uh, community theater that did outdoor plays at a park. It was called the Open Air Theater. It was in Titusville, New Jersey. And uh, my cousin and I would do that every summer, which was really fun. And so like that was our kind of like own foray into musicals in the, in the summer. That's a create your own summer camp vibe. Though. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, you know, we got to be around people who uh, we thought were professionals. I mean, I guess like when you do community theater, you're like, the adults are real professional actors. <laughs> This is a real thing. And, you know, as you grow older, you're like, oh, okay. He's a used car <laughs> salesman. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Like, oh, they, they do insurance during the day. Um, but yeah. So, but as a kid, I was like, oh, they are the, they are the thing. <laughs> that makes me wonder who you look at these days and say, oh, they are the thing. <laughs> oh my gosh. I have so many. Um, I mean, I think it depends on what you're asking about. I mean, I think from a comedic standpoint, I mean, Amy Poehler and, and Tina Fey and uh, like John Stewart and John Oliver and um, those kind of people, Mike Schur is my hero. Those kind of people are, are in, a, in a comedy setting are just people that I love. Um, Take a yeah, I I have a I have a list of people I would like to talk to. So if you need it, you tell me, and I will send it over. Very cool. And and two, um, some of the people you mentioned, I see some of that same aesthetic in in your work. Um, it, it's on screen and best summer ever. But you've also been on the TV series Difficult People, where you played a rude, abrasive woman. <laughs> Which is more fun for you to play? Oh, gosh. Um, I-, I love doing all of it. I think that, you know, anytime you get to stretch 
kind of who you are. That's kind of why you get into acting is because you you get to play and put on these different hats of different people. Um, and it taps into different parts of you. You know, I try very hard to be nice and kind uh, at times, um, you know, but then Twitter happens and that goes to, <laughs> goes to crap. But um <laughs> But for the most part, I try. And so, uh, but, you know, so it's nice to kind of tap into like that, like abrasive kind of um, mean person uh, (laughs) who's very high status because I I don't think of myself that way. So it's, it's fun to, fun to play those roles. Are are there acting challenges that you look forward to? Is there a kind of character or a setting that um, that you say, I really want to do that? Well, I mean, I guess like I want to be um, the lead in like a sitcom. So I don't really know what that character looks like yet. I, I want her to be a three dimensional character who addresses her disability, but it's not everything about her. And I, I think, you know, my dream would be to play someone who like owns a baseball team or something like that. Cause then that, kind of, I always wanted to be an athlete, but turns out not so good at sports. Um, <laughs> it goes along with the dancing. Um, and so, you know, I think that that would be really fun to kind of mesh all the things that I really enjoy into one character. Um, I'd, I'd love to do like a drama. I'd love to do um, another musical. Like uh, uh, they just came out with a, there's going to be like a Goonies reboot or not a reboot. There's like a show about, this woman who's like putting on a shot for shot remake of Goonies. And I was like, well, I've been training that for my whole life. So, um, uh, so, you know, something, so I, I, I just want to do a lot of stuff. Um, I just want to play characters that, that I believe in. Well, looking up a little bit of background information on best summer ever, we saw that it was originally scheduled, uh, South by Southwest 2020, but then, you know, COVID happened to everyone. Yeah. Um, what? <laughs> How, <laughs> a little thing called COVID out there. Oh, that thing. How much of, or like what kind of exposure are you seeing for the film in this whole new new normal we've got as far as like kind of the festival circuit and getting this film out to audiences? Yeah, it's been cool. I mean, I think that, you know, we all were very devastated by not being able to go to South by Southwest last year. I was mostly sad that I didn't get to go eat barbecue for a week, <laughs> but I just did that at home for a year. So oh, there you go. it worked out. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I think it's been cool to have a bunch of people who wouldn't have necessarily been able to see it if, if it wasn't a virtual setting. And, and I, you know, I mean, I, as much as I've hated the past year, some of the things that have come out of it, um, making things more accessible and, and, having more access to art that you wouldn't necessarily have access to has been actually genuinely nice. And, and I, I do think that we have gotten an opportunity for more people to see it than before. So it's pretty cool. So what do you hope that the people who see it um, take away? I mean, what do you want to stick with audiences? You know, I just want people to have a good time. I think sometimes when you watch a movie, you just want to have fun. And I hope that people see that this integrated cast is full of talented people and and that people with disabilities are just as capable of playing deep role. I mean, not that this character is super deep, but playing fun, enjoyable roles and and can do more than than what society has envisioned for them. And um but yeah, for the most part, I just want people to enjoy it and and have a good time. Take it for, take it for what it is. Uh, you know, we're not making Minari over here, but we are. Uh, <laughs> we're we're just trying to have a good time. Well, Aaron and I both did. So thank you so much for sharing it with us. Oh, well, thank you for watching it and for having me on your show. It's been such a delight. Shannon DeVito is one of the stars of Best Summer Ever. It screens as the closing film for SIF 45 streams tonight, April 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern. Following that screening, there will be a live Q&A with the directors and cast of Best Summer Ever, beginning at 8.15 p.m. on the SIF YouTube channel. Then join us at 9 p.m. ET for our live closing night ceremony, which will be broadcast from the festival's YouTube channel and on the homepage of our website, clevelandfilm.org. 
Best Summer Ever is available through Tuesday, April 20th at 11.59 p.m. For more details, the SIF website, clevelandfilm.org, is the place to go. I'm Dee Perry. And I'm Aaron Spears. We want to thank our sponsor for this podcast, Wayside Furniture, keeping it local since 1937. We also want to share how you can support your local film festival. Please consider a donation to our challenge match presented by Cuyahoga Arts and Culture. Our goal is to reach $145,000 this year to support the future of our festival. We're so grateful for any amount you're able to contribute. To donate, please visit clevelandfilm.org. And thank you for listening to SIF Speaks.